Alright folks, in this video I'm going to show you how to do a titration calculation. Uh, these problems are very similar to uh, neutralization reactions and uh, stoichiometric calculations, dimensional analysis, um, basically grams to grams, moles to moles, things like that. Except this time we're dealing with concentrations and volumes. Alright, let's get started. First of all, in the question it says that we have 10 milliliters of an unknown H2Cl3. Okay, that's this one. They gave us information, so I'm going to write down the 10.00 milliliters underneath the H2Cl3. And then as I read on, they tell me that it's unknown solution, meaning they don't know the concentration of it. Okay, and they also asked me what is the concentration of it. So basically they're going to ask me what's my concentration, so I'm going to put a number sign with a big M on it. Now, as I read through the question, you'll see that they tell me the concentration of the sodium hydroxide. Okay, and they tell me that it's uh, 0 0.0500 molarity, and they tell me that I'm going to use 15.76 milliliters of it. So I'm going to write 15.76 milliliters right there. Now, one thing that you need to realize is when they are giving you a concentration, they're actually telling you the number of moles over liters. So oftentimes I have my students to rewrite this as number sign moles over liters. Same thing here. Rewrite this number as 0 0.0500 moles per liter. That makes it easier when it comes time to do our uh, stoichiometric calculations, basically our dimensional analysis. Now if you look here, notice that we have two given amounts. We were given a volume and a concentration. Over here, we were given a volume, but we were asked about a concentration. So since we have more information known here, this is what we're going to start with. Because basically we have two givens versus just one given for this one. Okay, now once you realize which one you're going to start with, which is going to be the sodium hydroxide, then you're going to decide which one do you write down first. Do you write volume down first as you're given, or do you write down the concentration as given? Now, in the past, it's, I've always told my students it's easier to start with the volume, okay? Because the concentration, the molar concentration, when it's rewritten as moles over liters, is a much better conversion factor in your dimensional analysis or your stoichiometric calculations. So that's why you always start with the volume first. So what we'll do is we'll write down uh, 15.76 milliliters. Now there's a problem. We don't want to start with milliliters. We need to start with liters. And since we're starting with sodium hydroxide, we'll label that right here, we need to make sure that it's in liters because that's what this molar concentration is in, moles per liter. So we're going to convert that. Put the given over 1. Now, you need milliliters down here, and you'll need liters up on top. Now remember, for 1 liter, there's 1,000 milliliters. So we have successfully converted these milliliters into liters. Now we need to use the concentration that was given to us of the sodium hydroxide. Now what's nice is, if you set these up correctly, starting with the volume first, this thing that you had to rewrite, the concentration is moles per liter, will fit exactly into this blank. So you'll have 0 0.0500 moles of NaOH over 1 liter. Now check this out so far. So far we have milliliters of NaOH canceling with milliliters of NaOH and liters canceling with liters. And we're left with moles here. Now, if this is the first time you've written moles, the second and third time is the molar ratio. Now, check this out. You've got two moles of NOH okay, and here you've got one mole of H2CO3. Now, if you look we're so fortunate because we now have moles of H2Cl3. All that's missing here, if you look closely, is just liters. 
what did they give us? They gave us milliliters. So we need to we need to put this volume down on the bottom just so we can get it to where we can convert it. Okay? So basically I'm going to just throw this volume down the bottom down here just so I can get it down there. So I can convert it. Now, to make the calculation look appropriate, if I've got milliliters here and I need liters down here, then I need to somehow get rid of milliliters. Well, I'm going to do that by converting it. Well, I know that there's a thousand milliliters in one liter. And look what we end up getting. We end up finally getting moles of H2CO3 over liters of, guess what, H2CO3. And that's what we needed in the uh, in you know the whole time for the calculation. So let's put this into the handy dandy cheetah later, is what I call it. You've got fifteen point seventy six times uh, zero point zero five hundred times one times one times a thousand. Now when you do that you get seven hundred and eighty eight. Now I didn't I need to divide that number by a thousand. I need to also divide that number by two. And I also need to divide that number by ten. Now when I do that I end up getting the following. I end up getting zero point zero three nine four. Now the question is, what are my units? Well if you look close enough you see that you didn't mark out moles of H2CO3 and you were also left with liters, preferably one liter. Now, that can be rewritten as the following. Now, we need four sig figs here on the calculator. And they only showed me three. Okay, so let's go back and make sure. Oh, there's four, there's four, but there's only three here. So three is good. So my final answer is going to be 0, 0.0. 394 and to rewrite this as a concentration I'm going to rewrite it with a big M for molarity and I'm going to write down H2CO3 now folks this is how you do a titration calculation alright guys just watch this video a few times and I hope it helps